Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Mark 11 and John 12, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Hit the bell notification to get uh, an alert when new videos and devos come out. This is just a small synopsis of my daily Bible reading. You get into God's Word. This is meant just to be a sub supplement, not a substitute for your time in God's Word. Mark 11, verses 1 through 11, talks about uh, Jesus riding on a donkey into Jerusalem. It parallels Matthew 21, Luke 19, and John 12. Again, this is just uh, one of the few times where this is a biblical account in all four of the Gospels. Pretty cool. Mark very closely parallels the others, yet he adds that bystanders, instead of the owner, uh, ask the two disciples, Hey, what are you doing with the colt? And... Uh, they said what Jesus told them to say, which was, the Lord needs it. The remainder is closely paralleled to the other Gospels, so we won't uh, reiterate that today in this format. V verses 15 through 19 parallels Matthew 21 and Luke 19. Uh, it's where Jesus drives out those that are selling uh, animals and exchanging money in the temple area. Again, this wasn't the actual building or the sanctuary it was the outer wall, as you can see. Everything inside the outer wall is considered holy. And the merchants should have been outside the outer court wall, as you can see. Jesus in uh, verse 17 says, The scriptures declare my temple will be a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Then in verses, um, backing up a little bit, in verses, I'm combining 12 and 14 and verses 20 and through 25 here 12 and 14 talks about jesus telling the fig tree to produce no fruit no more fruit that parallels matthew 21 and then in 20 through 25 here the next morning the disciples noticed um that it withered from its roots up peter remembers and said look rabbi the fig tree that you cursed is withered and has died jesus says have faith in god verse 23 you can say to this mountain May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe that it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. The last part of 24, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. 25, if, but when you're praying, you must first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against. Ooh. So that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Verses 27 through 33, this again closely follows and parallels Matthew 21 and Luke 20 with the Pharisees asking Jesus, by what authority are you doing these things? Jesus said, uh, did John the Baptist, was his authority, was it from heaven or was it just merely human? And the Pharisees talked it over and they said, we don't know. And Jesus says, well, I won't tell you by what authority I do these things either. See, they were trying to trap him in his own words. John 12, John 12, woman anoints Jesus' feet here. Six days before Passover, Jesus arrived in Bethany, which was a suburb, kind of, of Jerusalem, if you want to think of it that way, at the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Martha, his her, Lazarus' sister, served the meal. Mary, the other sister, took 12 ounce uh, took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume and anointed Jesus's feet wiping it with her hair Judas Iscariot says hey this perfume should have been sold and the money been given to the poor not because he cared about money just because he was greedy and he often stole from he was the money keeper for the disciples and he often stole from that Jesus says leave her alone she did this in preparation for my burial you will you will not all. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Later, the people flocked to see Jesus and Lazarus because Jesus had raised him from the dead. The leading priests decided to kill Lazarus too at this point because, because of him, many people had deserted them, and believed in Jesus. Verses 19, 12 through nineteen. Uh, again, in all four Gospels, John didn't speak. John doesn't speak of how the donkey. Uh, came to be with Jesus riding on in Jerusalem, but he does specifically say that the people laid down palm branches, and that's where we celebrate Palm Sunday. Uh, John mentions Lazarus as being part of the procession that uh, 
escorted Jesus into Jerusalem. Many of the crowd had seen this happen, seen Lazarus raised from the dead, and they had told others. So there was a mighty, mighty crowd. Verses 20 through 36, some Greeks paid a visit to Philip, who then went and told Andrew, hey, they want to see Jesus. So Jesus speaking here in verse 23, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. Unless a kernel of wheat, listen to this, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in soul and dies, it remains alone. But with its death, it will produce many kernels to come, pl a plentiful harvest of new lives. Verses 27, My soul is troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. That's beautiful. That's why he came. He came to die. That was his purpose, to take away your sin, my sin. We can't save ourselves. Nobody else can save us. Nobody else can make us right with God. But the righteous one, Jesus Christ, he, he lived a sinless life, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life. We recognize that we're sinners. I'm a, I've done bad things. You've done bad things. If you confess that sin, believe that Jesus really took your place. He really took your penalty on that cross. He died where I should have, where you should have. And yet, he defeated death. He's stronger than death, stronger than the grave, stronger than hell, rose from the grave, has eternal life, offers that to me and you. Do you believe that? But he says, this is the very reason why I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice from heaven calls out, I have already brought glory to my name, and I will do it again. The crowd thought this was thunder or maybe angels had spoken. And Jesus says, hey, he clears all this up. The voice was for your benefit, not for mine. Verse 37 through 43, 37. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most people still didn't believe in him. This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. And it goes on to quote that. Verse 42. Many people did believe in him, however including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear the Pharisees would expel, expel them from the synagogue. The synagogue was everything. Being able to go through those ritualistic processes and to be made right with God. They didn't fully understand what they were giving up by not believing in Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can truly make you right with God. Uh, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus to the crowd says, If you trust in me, you are trusting not only in me, but God who sent me, 45. For when you see me, you see the one who sent me. And it ends in 50 saying, I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. And that's what I'm doing in this Devo. I'm just saying whatever the Bible says. I hope you don't draw any of my own opinions out of this, but you just see God's Word working and speaking through me. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.